Okay, we are going to go ahead and get started. Um, we may have a few people jumping on, so there may be a few dings that you might hear um, as more people join, um, but we are going to get started. Um, I'd first like to just thank everybody uh, for being here today. I know that there's a lot going on, um, and uh, I do appreciate you taking the time out to, to, to learn a little bit more about this deficiency update and sort of see how you can apply it uh, to your process. Um, before, though, we get started, I like to do some gentle housekeeping. Um, so you may notice, especially if this is your first time on one of these webinars, um, that there is a red microphone or phone next to your name. Um, that is on purpose. Um, everyone is currently muted to just sort of keep background noise to a minimum. Um, but with that said, though, we still want to know questions that you might have. Um, so we do have Brittany Carroll on today's call with us. Uh, she will be moderating questions for us. So if you do have any questions, please drop them into the chat box. Um, if you're using the GoToMeeting that's located on the side of your screen, um, there'll be a little drop down with chat, very similar to what you see on my screen right now, um, that you can drop your questions into. If you are using the GoToMeeting in your browser, you'll see almost like a little chat bubble icon. Um, just go ahead, click there, and please drop any of your questions there. Um, make sure, though, that they are available to all or the entire audience so that everybody can see them. Um, and then at the end of this, we will answer and address any questions that we can get to and any that we can't get to within the half hour, we will then just follow up with in an email. Um, but without further ado, what are we going to cover today? So I know this was in the email, but just sort of to review what we're going to cover today. Um, also, if this is one of your first Express webinars with us, welcome. Um, we will be approximately 15 to 20 minutes of actual following through, looking at different items, um, and then the remainder will be for questions. So these are intended to be very fast, um, covering just one specific feature, but today we are covering deficiencies. Um, we recently had that deficiency update come out, um, first on the iPad in our 3.4 release, then uh, transitioning over with the 3.5 iPad update that came out um, just about a week and a half ago at this point. Um, so we're going to go over what exactly did that deficiency update include in the back end and how can you apply that to your process. Um, I'm going to show you how to create resolution statuses. So resolution statuses are a great way for you to kind of keep track of where your deficiencies are. Um, that's visible to you in the back end, technicians in the field, and then ultimately your end users as well or your customers. Um, I'll go over how to resolve a deficiency. So the general concept of it is still the same. You'll click the red resolve button, but there's a few more steps that you can take to add a little bit more detail um, that your customer can see and also for you. Uh, same thing, same general concept still applies to this, but I'm going to show you how to edit and answer and create or remove a deficiency. So it pretty much, like I said, follows the same flow, but there's a few extra things that you can do. And then lastly, I'm going to show you how to generate an updated report for your customer. Um, and then also for a record for you, for you as well. Um, how to take and use those resolution statuses, those resolution notes, and then provide your customer an updated report that will also show those statuses and those resolution notes for them as well. So before we jump right into it, why is the deficiency tab so important? Well, that is where everything that is identified during an inspection lives. So all of your deficiencies are there. In addition, everything can be seen in one location. So all of your deficiencies are there. Instead of you going to a building, then going to the deficiencies tab at the building, you're able to sort on your deficiencies and see a certain date range, um, a certain building, a certain type of deficiency. It's all there in one location. The other thing is, is that the deficiencies tab is also helps you as the back end user see the information, but also, information can then also be seen by the technicians, and that's driven from the deficiency screen. Um, any resolution status is set by you can also be seen by them. And then, like I've said beforehand, your end users or your customers. And then most importantly, that deficiencies tab helps you maintain a paper trail of your issues. 
So you are identifying de issues, deficiencies in the field. You're documenting them. You are, you know, trying to repair them, making quotes. You maybe are repairing them. And then you're keeping a trail of those that are still out for quote, ones that are open, maybe you haven't gotten to yet, and then ones that are actually resolved. And you can see all of that information right in that screen. So what I would like to do is just jump right into the product. So I'm gonna jump over into the screen. And here we go. We are in the back end of Inspect Point. So up on my screen right now is the deficiencies tab. So if you are newer to Inspect Point, or maybe you're not actively in the deficiencies tab, this is located on the left sidebar, the deficiencies tab. And when you click on it, this is what you will see. Um, some new things that we've launched with this deficiencies update. Um, there's a couple columns, um, a couple uh, sorting options that you have now. But for the most part, the actual flow and the information that's here has been here from before. Um, as always, we've always had our inspection, building, and date open. So you always know what inspection it was, what at building that is associated with, your date opened, and then most importantly, that detail is the question that the deficiency was identified at. In addition, you'll also see your notes and your internal notes. So those were also there beforehand as well. Your notes column are those notes that were sent back from the field um, when the deficiency was identified. So not all of your deficiencies will have a note, but if one has been sent back with the deficiency, it will display right here on the screen for you, as well as any internal notes. Um, so the internal notes, like I said, those are the ones that are just internal, um, but those can be updated by you in the back end, or those may have been sent back from in the field. Um, so if we do scroll down, we have seen, we do have some notes that are visible to the customer and also visible to us. Some of the newer updates that exist are the two columns that are quoted with the resolution. Um, there's the resolution status, and then there's the resolution notes column. So resolution status is a way for you to designate, I guess, the status of where your deficiency is. These are statuses that you create. Um, they do not come pre-built in with Inspect Point, so I'm gonna show you where you will add these statuses. Ultimately, you're going to create statuses that fit into your process, or that you would like to fit into a process that you're going to create to maintain and manage your deficiencies. So, you'll have your resolution status here, so you can quickly glance to see, you know, hey, is it out for a quote? Does it need further rep repair? Um, does it, has it been repaired? Um, you can see that quickly right here. Um, you'll also see your resolution notes. So these are notes that you can leave and update in the back end or technicians can update in the field. Um, that will be a separate webinar on how to sort of um, update and maintain the deficiencies on the iPad, but the resolution notes can be set by the technician or by the office. Um, resolution status and notes, once applied, can be visible to the customer as well if you regenerate a report. Um, it will always show your original deficiency, your original notes, all of that, plus the, the resolution status and the notes. So if your customer needs that, they can see that. Um, in addition, we've added some sorting features so that if you, you know, only want to see a building based on a certain building, or sorry, deficiencies based on a certain building, you can come in here, select the building that you'd like, and only see deficiencies for that building. Um, if you'd like to see deficiencies based on the type of inspection, whether it's a sprinkler or a fire alarm or extinguishers, you can do that from the drop down under deficiency type. And then you can give a date range. So if you only want to see them for a certain week or a certain day, you can give a parameter of, of when you want to see your deficiencies. Um, one thing that is coming out shortly is the ability for you to be able to export these out into a CSV. So if you do need to give these to a secondary source or, you know, you will be quoting out of another program, um, you'll be able to, you know, export out your filter um, into a CSV so you can work outside of Inspect Point if you, if you would like and need to. Um, but one of the things that I mentioned was this resolution status. Now, like I said, resolution statuses are set by you. To set a resolution status, what you're going to do is navigate to the upper right corner of the screen where it says welcome and then whatever email you're signed in as. Click the drop down arrow and you're going to click resolution status. 
Now I'm gonna open this up in another tab. And on this screen right here, we're going to see the statuses that I set up in our demo environment here. Um, so these are ones that I created. At any point, I can delete these, I can edit them, but to create brand new ones, the very first time you come to the screen, this will be blank. What you'll do is you'll click New Deficiency Resolution Status. You will type in the status that you would like and click Save. Once you do that, you'll be automatically redirected back to this Deficiency Resolution Status screen, and you will repeat that process until you have all of your resolution statuses listed on this screen. Um, it's recommended that you try to keep these to about four to five statuses just so it doesn't get out of control. Um, and if they're very closely put together, um, like out for quote or out for something else, it's very close to out for quote, um, it could get confusing. Um, so we tend to recommend four to five statuses in here. Um, and then, like I said, you'll just create the new deficiency resolution status, add it, save it, and repeat that process. Now, the moment that you add those resolution statuses, I'm back over here on this on my deficiencies tab, you're going to see your statuses available for you when you go to resolve a deficiency. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to resolve the deficiency. So let's just say I'm ready to resolve, uh, let's go with, are the FDC caps and plugs in place? Um, or actually, let's go with the Amazon Studios one. Are the visible sprinklers free of foreign materials including paint? Let's say this has been resolved. I'm ready to resolve it. So just like before, what you would do is you can click resolve. Now, if you click resolve, this pop-up box is going to appear. You can resolve your deficiency by clicking resolve and setting the, setting the notes, or you have the option to come in and click edit next to it. You can still resolve your deficiencies, but say you wanted to see the notes and internal notes. You wanted to set the resolution status and the resolution notes while also seeing the notes and internal notes that were sent back by the technician. You can click edit and do that from this screen. So to resolve a deficiency, we'll go ahead and we'll check the resolve button or the little check mark. Next, the deficiency status, if this was not set by the technician, then you do not have to set this, but these deficiency statuses are relation into whatever the NFPA um, status of that deficiency would be. What we want to focus on is the resolution status. So we want to indicate that this is repaired. By default, it will automatically on the report show today. But if we wanted to maybe backdate it because we didn't get a chance to resolve it when it was actually done, we can set the date. And then we can write a resolution note. Now, the resolution note will be visible to us in the back end. And then if we regenerate the report, will be visible to our customer on their report. So maybe we just want to say repaired by. John on 10 to, uh, 10 22 2018. Now, there is no limit to what these notes could be. So you could be very detailed and say exactly what was used, um, what was done, how long he was on site. Um, you could say simply repaired on this date, or you can leave it completely blank. Um, a resolution status and a resolution note are not required in order to resolve a deficiency. It's just a way for you to do uh, provide your customer and also yourselves a little bit more information to what happened. So if we are all done, maybe we don't want to indicate or take away the notes because we want to still know, hey, those four buildings they had, or those four units had painted sprinkler heads. We're just going to click update deficiency. Now, when we click the update deficiency, we'll no longer see it listed in this uh, in this screen. If we reset our parameters to just the 21st, to tomorrow, and then we just do systems and assets. I will no longer see that deficiency listed with my other Amazon Studio deficiencies. Um, if I want to edit an answer, so let's just say I'm scrolling along on my deficiencies tab and I look and I'm like, mm, actually, that shouldn't be a deficiency. I, that was marked incorrectly. What you can do is you can still edit your answers like you would before. So what you'll do from here is click on the ID number. So it's going to follow the same exact process as editing an answer before. So you're always going to want to try to find the inspection ID number. 
and then you'll click the number of answers. So the general way that you would still update an answer. Once again, we're going to try to we're going to scroll until we find the answer that we want to update. And then let's just say this is not deficient. We'll just pretend that this wouldn't be deficient. <laughs> um, we will click on the ID number just like we would beforehand. We'll click edit answer just like we would beforehand, but this screen now looks a little bit different. If I want to change this answer from no to yes, what I'll do is I'll click into yes, and I'm going to click up update answer. Now when I update answer, it's going to prompt me that to let me know that deficiency will be deleted, that marking a question yes removes the deficiency. Still, the best way and the only way that we will flag your deficiencies by design and by default will be if it's a no answer or a fail answer. So by changing it, we're just letting you know that deficiency will no longer be visible for you in the deficiencies tab and will no longer be listed as a deficiency on the building or report. So if you click update, the answer will now be set to yes and will no longer appear as a deficiency on the inspection, on the inspection when you generate it. And you will also no longer see it in the deficiencies tab. You'll no longer also see it listed as a deficiency down below here. Now, let's just say we needed to change an answer from yes to no. Yes to no would flag that deficiency. So what we'll do is we'll click edit answer. We'll change the answer from yes to no. And we'll update the answer. Now there's no flag letting you know that you're now creating a deficiency. You just know that when you move it from no, from yes to no or from pass to fail, a deficiency will automatically be flagged. Now, to take it another step further, say you have a text question um, or you have a question that it might be answered yes, but you want to flag it as a deficiency. By design, InspectPoint does not flag yes answers as deficient. Um, we also have no way to really indicate if a text field question is deficient or not. So let's just pretend that this is a text question. What we could do is, is we can always edit the answer, same thing, but we can create a deficiency for it. So we could take a user added question such as tag color, and let's say that tag color was red. That won't flag as a deficiency, like I mentioned, because it's a text field. But you want to let your customer know, hey, that's deficient. You could come in, find the answer, edit the answer, and click Create Deficiency. That would automatically then add that question to the deficiencies screen. So we're enabling and empowering you to be able to create deficiencies as well as remove deficiencies as well. Um, once a deficiency has been um, resolved, once they've been adjusted, the biggest thing is now you can go ahead and you can generate up your reports for your customers. So let me go and find one of those, the Amazon. I want to go to this Amazon Studios. I know I already resolved a deficiency. I already have some deficiencies that have resolution statuses. I have the notes on here. But what I want to do is now generate a report. I want my customer to know, hey, this inspection at Amazon Studios, when we did the inspection, the answers were deficient, and we've resolved some of them. Some of them are still outstanding, but for a record for you, I want you to have the original inspection, the original answers, plus some updated information just for you as a reference and also for a reference for you. So. I'm going to generate a report just like I normally would. I'm going to go to the inspection ID. From the inspection details screen, I'm going to click generate full report. And then the report is going to generate. When the report is ready, I'll navigate over to the reports tab. And then we'll wait for it to generate here. And then while we're waiting for it to generate, like I said, this is going to help you because now you can provide your customers an update as to the status of the deficiency with out removing the original deficiency. Users before what they would do to give customers an update of where they are in the processes would change the answer from no to yes. That would provide the customer with an updated report showing that the deficiency was resolved. However, 
you would then lose that record of that deficiency being identified. Um, now what we're allowing you to do is to still maintain that record of it, but provide that update. So we'll go ahead and we'll refresh, and now we'll click download. We'll go to the end of the report, and now we're gonna start seeing on here, this is repaired, right? This was the one, this very first one, this is the one that we resolved. It status is repaired. It still indicates that it was a deficiency because that was deficient for all intents and purposes. When we did our inspection in October, that was deficient. We are indicating that it is no longer deficient. It is repaired, but we will still maintain that there was a deficiency. It is resolved, but there was a deficiency on that October inspection. We'll also see we've got a couple other repaired, several other repaired, and then we have another one on here that just needs um, further review. So there's just additional information that your customers can start to see on those reports. Um, let me switch back over here. So I know that these are very fast and I went through a lot of the deficiency um, update pretty quickly. Um, so um, it's just some key takeaways before we get into the in, before we get into some questions, which I see we we've got a couple of. Um, the the biggest thing with the deficiencies and then this update that we have is is it gives you more details. So you know the deficiency status, and then your customers know the deficiency status, and your technicians know the status of those deficiencies. Um, we're constantly building on this concept. So what we're coming out with next is this concept of a deficiency history. So if if a if a item or a question is consistently identified as a deficiency, you will see a re record of every single, every single time it was failed. Um, the customer can see that if the technician wants to show it to them, um, but then the technician can also see all of that information out in the field without viewing a previous inspection report. Um, another big thing, these two are really exciting, um, but we had a massive update to our proposals feature. Now, the proposals feature did not go live to every single person yet. Um, so we are going to be hosting a webinar in the second week of November. Um, and that will give a full overview of the new feature, um, the update, so you can decide if you want to stay on the current proposal um, version or you want to upgrade to the new um, version two proposals. Um, we're going to, like I said, the second week in November, just keep your eyes peeled. Um, but big thing with our proposals is that you can start taking your deficiencies and directly tying them into a proposal. So it'll be really exciting to show you guys that. Um, and then big thing, many of you guys I know are waiting for this, but it is the beginnings of service. Um, we are so close with service and nailing down deficiencies, uh, you know, revamping up the proposals. Um, that is a direct tie into what will be our service offering. Um, so it is the beginning of that, which we are ex very excited to um, soon be um, hoping to have available to all of you shortly. So whew, with that said, um, let's see if we have any questions. Um, so let me just unmute Brittany here. All right, Brittany, do we have any questions? Um, yes, we do. Hello, everyone, by the way. Um, Christine asked, does this resolution status alleviate the need for a repeat inspection to correct the deficiency? What she means by that is we have been scheduling one-time inspections to resolve deficiencies. If we note the deficiencies in the tab and keep them updated status-wise, when the deficiency is resolved, when we go to generate the new report, it will show corrective action taken. That's a really good question. Um, so. It kind of depends. Um, so if you need to do a brand new sort of reinspection, this also is going to help tie into that whole concept, which we will have reinspection shortly. Um, that will ultimately send the original inspection out there. You can update it. You can add new photos and all of that jazz. Um, big thing is with this one is, yeah, I mean, essentially that's what you could do. Um, if you're basically generating a brand new inspection report just to show the resolution of a deficiency, then yes, this could, this could um, 
I guess, get rid of that for you. Um, you can just simply resolve the deficiency, show the action that was taken. Um, if you need to add photos or anything like that, you could. And then you could just regenerate the report. So that way you show the original deficiency, the original notes, and then all of the updated information on there. Perfect. Um, Delia also asked, is there a way to flag deficiencies to alert the back end user when setting up an inspection? Say you have a non critical deficiency. Um, she says a head wrench is missing. When we complete the annual inspection the next year, is there a way to flag the back end user to ensure that this gets corrected? That is a very good question, also. <laughs> um, currently, there is not a way to do that. Um, but with that said, we do have our notifications feature coming out very soon. Um, so this is definitely something that I could I could add to that that feature to see if we can also see alerts um, maybe at the inspection level when you're scheduling or just an alert on the screen. But while we don't have that right now, I will definitely make sure that is added to the feature backlog um, and see if we can get that part of the uh, notifications update that's coming out. Perfect. Um, that looks to be all the questions that I have. All right. Does anybody else have any questions? Give it a minute here. I know this can be a lot too, and I'm like throwing all the information out. So if you think of something after the fact, um, we are always available to answer any questions that you might have. Um, so if you think of a question after the fact, um, please email us at support at inspectpoint.com. Um, uh, you can also contact us via phone um, at 855-743-9598. And then we have a new actual email as well. Um, if you have any feature requests, we love to hear from you. You guys are the ones using the product. Um, feature requests. Um, we do listen to every feature. Um, we will always let you know when it can be prioritized into the product. Um, but email us at features at inspectpoint.com for any of those feature requests. Um, oh, and then really quick, we've got a deficiency. Uh, oh, we also have another question. Okay, perfect. What is that? Sorry to interrupt. No, it's so fine. Um, Barbara, Rita asked, Barbara Rita asked if the building has a deficiency that is reported um, several months in a row, and the proposal is finally accepted to correct the defect. How do you resolve the deficiency for multiple inspections? Also, good questions. You guys are got, you guys are like rock stars with questions right now. So um, that will come out when we have our deficiency history. So what we're basically doing is is right now, unfortunately, you would have to resolve all those deficiencies individual because they're you know associated with different inspections. Um, we're coming out with the next phase of deficiencies, which is deficiency history. What that will do is it will flag the deficiency as once and then list the dates underneath it that was identified. So that if you resolve the deficiency on one, you can resolve the deficiency on all of them. Um, and then that note would be applied to all of your inspection reports and all of your inspections so that you do not have to go in individually. Um, we are working on that concept for both the iPad for the technicians to be able to see so they don't see such a long list um, if there, it is a repeat offender. Um, and then uh, also having that on the back end as well. So that we're looking for the 3.6 iPad release that will be part of that. Anything else anybody can, can think of? All right, all right. Well, I know we're at our, our 1030 mark. I really do appreciate you guys being with us today. Um, I will and have been recording this, this uh, webinar. So I will make sure to send around a, a recording of this webinar um, so you can share it with anybody. And then I will also send links to documentation if you guys uh, want to see step-by-step -step guides. Um, but once again, I just wanna thank all of you for being here. Um, and if you think of anything, please do not hesitate to contact us. Um, so with that, have a great day and we will speak with you soon. Oh, hold on. We've got one more question. If anyone's still on, we got one more question. <laughs> um, um, Veronica asked, when we schedule an inspection for future years, how do we clear it from the schedule once it has been scheduled? 
Okay, so scheduling an inspection for future years, how do we schedule from the schedule once it's been scheduled? Uh, you would move that inspection to the canceled status. Um, that would then remove that from the, um, I guess, the calendar screen if it's already been scheduled. But then that would also, um, if you cancel the series, that would cancel then all of your future inspections so you don't have continue to have them in pending. Um, one, one thing to note though, Veronica, with that is if the inspection has been scheduled and it has been loaded onto the technician's iPad already, they will have to swipe left to delete it from their iPad at that point um, just because it's loaded and saved onto their iPad. Um, but you would technically move the status to cancel in the back end. You're welcome. <laughs> um, all right, so like I said, any other questions, we are here to help. Um, answers on anything that we covered today, definitely email us at support. Any future requests, let us know those at features at inspectpoint.com. And if you have any anything that you need to talk to us about, our phone number is up on the screen right there. It's the best way to get a hold of us. Um, oh. One more question. Are you able now able to see pass or failed on the reports? Um, yes, I think too you're referring to on the cover page. Um, that has actually, and we were gonna reach out to you for that. Uh, that is actually live for you. Um, so what uh, I believe Veronica is referring to is the uh, pass or fail on the fire alarm um, reports, and then also a sort of breakdown of a number of devices. Um, so what we, that is live. Um, if anyone wants that, that doesn't come out of the box though. Um, so not everyone wants that. So, but if you are doing fire alarm reports and you wanna see a breakdown of number of devices, device types, number on the building, number inspected, number passed, number failed, and then have the ability to pass or fail an alarm system, um, just let us know. But yes, Veronica, that is, that is available. We'll uh, reach out to you about that right after this. Right. So um, let me see. Like I said, any other questions, just let us know. Um, and we, like I said, we are here to help. That is what we, we are here for. <laughs> um, so um, I am, like I said, available at any of that information. You will hear from Brittany or myself. Um, so if you have any questions, just feel free to contact us there. Um, and then, like I said, have a great day and we will speak with you soon.